We're using virtual cameras to capture images in our virtual scenes inside of Cinema 4D, but also in basically every other render engine. So it makes sense to talk a little bit on the workings and mechanics of cameras and to learn how we can use them artistically. So let's first of all have a look at a camera itself. The What we have here is basically a simple digital single lens reflex camera. A few important things to note is first of all the aperture. So that's basically the opening of the camera where the light travels through the lenses inside of your camera system. And then there is the mirror which mirrors the light to this kind of uh, reflecting kind of thing in the top and then to your eye. Now if you press the shutter, the mirror will flip to the top, light will travel to your sensor and the, sen the, the image will be taken and stored on your SD card. The aperture or f-stop can be changed, it can, make, can be made bigger or smaller and we can also change the shutter speed which means that we can define how long the light should be uh, traveled here to the sensor at the back. Then we have something which is called focal length and this is the distance from your aperture to your sensor at the back. And if you have a fixed um, focal length lens on your camera, you cannot change the focal length. It's defined by the lens of your camera. So for example, it could be a lens with 18 millimeters and that would define basically that the distance from the sensor to your aperture is 18 millimeters. However, if you have a zoom lens where you can change the focal length, you can turn on one of the rings and then the focal length will change and thus the distance between aperture and the sensor will change. And we use this kind of thing to zoom into objects we like to take pictures of. Um, but also we can use this to focus on different uh, objects in our scene. So the basic setup, very simplified, would be we have a lens. We have two focal points. One focal point is where your object is placed and the other focal point is on your sensor. So this is at least the case if everything is done right. And then you have a sharp representation of your object on your camera sensor. If your object is however too close or too far away from your focal point, then the image will be unsharp. So this is the just a very simple kind of understanding of how optics and lenses work. So kind of a cross section. Now, um, we want to have a look at a specific kind of thing which um, can be done with cameras and this is the blurriness or unsharpening of the background or the separation of a sharp foreground to a blurry background. And we use the term depth of field for this and what depth of field actually describes is the distance between the nearest and the furthest object that are still acceptably sharp. So as you can see, this kind of can here in the front is sharp and the objects in the back are very unsharp. And the depth of field is basically from the start here and at the lower part of the image, maybe to the back of this kind of cube where the can is standing on. So it basically means that it's just an area in which your ob objects appear sharp and outside of that area objects will appear blurry. It's a commonly used method in photography to separate foreground and background and it's easily achievable with more or less any camera and we can also use this effect in a render engine to create this nice blurry background. To understand what kind of things affect the blurriness or the sharpness of an image, we have to look at three things. The focal length, the aperture, and the distance to the object. First of all, let's have a look at the focal length. 
So as I mentioned before, the focal length is the distance of your lens to your sensor. Now, the acceptable sharpness area or depth of field is defined in this kind of simplified illustration here um, by the distance of those two rays or lines. So the bigger the line will get, the more unsharp our image will be, basically. Um, so with a distance of which is shown here with this white line, we would say that this is an acceptable uh, sharpness we can accept in our image and this will still appear sharp to our eye. So with this kind of focal length, we get this kind of area which is sharp. Now, if we decrease the focal length and make it smaller, you can see that the angles or the lines will be scaled down more or less or the distance um, basically will be stretched out. So this kind of acceptable sharpness area will get larger as this kind of angle gets smaller. So as you can see, smaller focal length, this angle gets smaller, which means the acceptable sharpness area gets wider. If you take photos with your smartphone, you probably noticed that you cannot um, take unsharp images, basically. Uh, I mean, you can, but if you cannot have an image where you have a sharp foreground and, and blurry background. This is because the smartphone basically has the lens directly in front of the sensor because it's so small. And this is why the manufacturers came up with technologies to do a fake background blur, like for example, the iPhone does with the portrait mode. It's physically not possible for a smartphone to create an area of unsharpness because the sensor is so close to the lens. However, with big cameras, we can achieve very large focal length and thus create very narrow acceptable sharpness areas and thus create nice blurry backgrounds. Another thing we can use to change the acceptable area of sharpness is by moving closer to the object. When we move closer to the object, the angle of those lines get larger again as because we have to get closer to the subject um, they need to be, um, the angle needs to be bigger. So, okay, I don't have actually have a picture here of, of a wide distance, but if you uh, kind of imagine that we move this kind of sense, sensor and lens to the left, again, we have the same thing as with the focal length, the angle here would get smaller and thus the acceptable sharpness area would be bigger. Now let's have a look at the last portion of this kind of thing and it's the aperture. We can open and close the aperture on our camera and to understand this again we say that the amount or the distance of those kind of rays is defining the sharpness of the image then the, the farther away they are or the more spread they are the more unsharp the image will be and so if we have a wide aperture where every light can go into our camera or to our lens to our sensor you can see the acceptable sharpness area is quite small because we already have quite a bit of distance here between those rays now if i would close my aperture a little bit you can see that the acceptable sharpness area will get bigger and be more stretched out as we kind of cut out a little bit of the light rays and only take into account the rays which will come through our aperture and through the lens to our sensor. So those are the three things which define the depth of field and the amount of blurriness. The more open your aperture, the more blurry your image will be. And to understand the aperture or the f-stops a little bit more, what the f-stop basically means and you if you're a little bit into photography you probably know those numbers every f-stop means that the amount of life and of life of light halves with each step so for most lenses an f-stop of 1.4 is like the lowest you can get or the the more open the most open you can get and then with every step 
the light will be uh, which will get to through your camera lens will be only half as the amount as the stop before so a larger opening means more light gets into your camera and to your sensor and you will achieve more blurriness on the other hand a small opening and the big f-stop will mean that you get less light into your camera but you will have more sharpness in your image i prepared a test scene and you can use the scene uh, as well to try out what you can do with the different um, things you've learned from this session um, and there here's a few examples on how or what i talked about so for example we have here the comparison of distance to subject on the left side we have a close distance to the subject and as you can see the things on the background gets more blurry now if i move further away from my object and set the focal point to this object you can see that the objects in the background stay sharper as compared to the first image over here now when it comes to focal length you can see that with a 60 millimeter focal length we get a nice blurry background here and with an 18 millimeter which is kind of a wide angle uh, lens you can see we get much more information about the room you can also see how stretched out the view actually is because of the wide angle and you can see that everything is pretty much uh, has the same sharpness so we have a very wide depth of field um, again here with the 60 millimeter uh, lens focal length you can also see that the objects appear much closer to each other than compared with this kind of version uh, where we have the 18 millimeter lens so you can also use focal length to kind of define how you want to your objects appear in your rendering last but not least we have the f-stop or the aperture and as you can see with an aperture of 2.0 we get a very blurry background and if we now move up the scale a little bit you can see with each step we get more sharpness in the background and with an f-stop of 16 we actually have a completely sharp image so i have a scene prepared we have the camera in here it has this corona camera tag and you can open up the um, virtual frame buffer start the interactive rendering i put this here a little bit to the side and then you can do a few things you can for example change the f-stop so let's say we want to change this from uh, 8 to 16 and this should lead to a more sharp image here in the background we can also change the focal length you have to click on the camera itself as you can see we're still on 60 millimeters here so you might want to go down to something like 36 millimeters then you have the focal focus distance this is basically the point on where the camera will focus and we can zoom out here a little bit and have a look so the focus distance basically is the distance at which your camera will focus so you can change this set this to for example the point here or the object here in the front then you can of course move the camera itself you can move it closer or move it further away from the object to test out how the distance will change the depth of field um, and yeah that's basically it so we have the focal length we have the focus distance we have the distance of the camera we have the f-stop over here in the corona settings again the focus distance is actually also available here um, we haven't talked about sensor size uh, but also the sensor size will kind of um, yeah be can be used to change the, uh, the depth of field or basically also it's linked to the focal length the smaller the sensor size the more cropped your image will basically be last but not least to actually enable the depth of field you have to come to the corona settings camera post-processing um, and either activate depth of field in here and this will override all the settings or you have to go to your camera 
or the corona tag basically and scroll down and override and activate depth of field over here in those settings. If you don't do this, you will not get the depth of field effect. So you have to activate it either here in the camera tag or in the options menu. And then you can play around with this kind of scene and yeah, find out how the camera behaves and learn about depth of field. And then if you understood that, you can of course use the depth of field effect to um, change the appearance of your rendering or of your product visualization yourself uh, and use it for your projects.